now it looks like everyone is here. I would like to welcome everyone to the April 24th meeting of the Community Resources Committee. I'm Chair Garrett Perry. And with that being said, Laura, would you please do a roll call? Sure. Councillor Perry. Here. Councillor Elkins. Here. Councillor Jarrett. Here. And Councillor Maori. Here. Nick of time. Welcome, Rachel. Um, so the first thing I want to announce is that this meeting is being audio and video recorded. Um, if anyone would like to make a public comment, now is the time. I don't think I see anyone really here in the waiting room who wants to do that. No. All right. That being said, we will move on to the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, did everyone have a chance to, to peruse those minutes? All right. Well, I'll be looking for a motion. Move approval. Second. All right, Laura, I'm going to take a roll. Sure. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. And Councillor Maori. Yes. All right. Well, we have approved the minutes of December 19th, 2022. Uh, the next item on our, <clears throat> uh, our updates and announcements from committee members. Does anyone have any updates or announcements they'd like to share? All right, seeing none, um, we get to move to the next item, which I'm very excited. Uh, we have Leslie Laurie here from the Northampton Vibrancy Project. Um, I have been wanting to share some information with not only this committee, but with the community at large uh, about what the Vibrancy Project has been doing. Uh, with that being said, I would like to recognize you, Leslie, and have you kind of introduce what we've been doing. All right, thank you. Well, first of all, thanks um, for Garrett's um, great interest and work on the Vibrancy Project, and also all of your um, interest in hearing some about what the Vibrancy Project has been all about and what we look forward to doing in the months that we still have left. And I thought first, um, who I am is I was the founder and the CEO of Tapestry Health for 40 years. And then over the last um, seven years, what I did was I helped start NETA as a medical marijuana dispensary and then as an adult use dispensary. And um, when a multi-state organization business purchased it, I left. Um, so while I haven't lived in Northampton um, ever, um, I feel like I've spent most of my waking days in Northampton and so have been really um, honored to have the opportunity to lead the Economic Development Committee of the Chamber for the last few years and seeing it both from the vision of a nonprofit and then a profit making business in town too. Um, so it was really the Economic Development Committee that when the pen, well, I should say the Ep Economic Development Committee is a um, committee of the chamber, which is composed of about 50 individuals that meet on a monthly basis. And there are subcommittees with that. But the Economic Development Committee um, has as its vision to try to bring more um, vibrancy to Northampton. And it was really faced with a real challenge when the pandemic happened. And what we did was to do um, a survey of um, quite a number of people as to what were the kind of key things that we needed to focus on. And the most dramatic during that period was really the restaurants in Northampton. And so what we came up with was the 413 takeout program, which was extremely successful, not only for the um, businesses, which were the restaurants, but what we then did was to roll out the 413 dine-in or take-out as things unfolded with 
the um, COVID epidemic. And what that afforded us was the ability to um, also support individuals who might not have um, the resources to um, pay for restaurant meals. We worked with the uh, Northampton Survival Center and also with the DNA to actually use different businesses that could also help um, provide um, food. And what people were able to do was to not only buy a dinner for themselves, but for someone else. And so really hundreds and hundreds of dinners were purchased that way. And um, what we were encouraged with was just the reaction that we got, not only from um, the businesses, but the Gazette was really also instrumental in helping to promote that program. And so what um, we felt through the Economic Development Committee, what we wanted to do was to see if there could be a partnership so that we weren't in little silos, the Economic Development Committee doing one thing, the DNA doing another, the city doing another. And rather, we um, really birthed the partnership with what we call the Vibrancy Project. And that was a 20 month long project. And um, it will end in December, but we've really spawned quite a lot. So I'll just quickly let you know the overview of the project. Um, what we um, looked to was that it would be a 20 month long initiative. We didn't want it to be unending because we felt that would give it more oomph. And some people who were not interested in long-term projects, but rather some where there was a beginning and an end and something which potentially could feel more concrete. So um, we were, it was going, it is planning to end um, in December. And the idea was to actually help businesses recover from the pandemic and to revitalize Northampton as a regional destination for entertainment, shopping, and dining. And our goal was to restore that vibrancy and economic development vitality to Northampton by supporting job growth, promoting events and activities, and driving new business developments. And so what we did was um, basically create um, four committees. You know, I was the, the, um, the one who was um, responsible for um, making sure the connections were occurring. Um, but we also wanted to give um, um, freedom and creativity for the committees. And Garrett was uh, one of the co-chairs of the events committee. We had a staffing committee, or we have a staffing committee, a building buzz committee, a new business committee, and a funding and resource committee. And um, those committees um, have been functioning. And I can tell you some of the really exciting achievements that we've already um, uh, accomplished. Um, but obviously, there's still months left and more to do. Um, and we have a steering committee of these committees that meets on a monthly basis and now an every other month basis. Um, to make sure that that communication continues. So for example, for the funding committee and really thanks to the city council and um, the mayor, um, the funding resource committee um, applied for um, quite a bit of the ARPA local money. And um, through the vehicle of the DNA, um, we were able to receive over, well, $300,000. And that was $125,000 for small business support, $75,000 for new business grants, a $50,000 program with the Board of Health, um, with a ventilation program for bars and restaurants. And then also um, the um, support 
to start a Northampton downtown foundation, a 501c3, because we realized with the uh, work with the Vibrancy Project and the 413 Project, when people wanted to just donate money, we didn't have a vehicle to do that. The chamber didn't have one, um, and even the DNA didn't have one. We actually needed to use um, the Northampton Survival Center, which um, did that work with us. So again, we want a vehicle for not only institutional support, but there are individuals who also believe in the work, this work, and we need to have a tax deductible way for people to also make those kinds of donations. So that was funding and resources. So it felt like we did something really big and this work is already unfolding. Um, uh, with staffing, it was very focused. I mean, if this is how you'd like me to proceed, I'm happy to just go through what these are, but um, also wanna be responsive to what you are interested in. And Garrett is also an expert with this. So you know, I hope you'll, you'll really you know, weigh in as um, there's anything you feel like I've omitted or you wanna add. Well, I, I think right now a good overview for some of the counselors who have not uh, known about the work, I think it's good. And then we can ask some questions and I, I'll chime in with some of the things I've been working on as well. But the floor is continuing to be yours, Leslie. Okay, good. All right, so um, one of the other really kind of exciting um, committees was the Building Buzz Committee. And um, what we realized within the framework of our group was that Robin Goldstein, who had grown up in Northampton and I mean, is a professor of, um, you know, He's a professor in California, but he actually continues to live in Northampton. Many, many years ago when he was more of a kid, he wrote a book about the five college dining. He was one of the first to actually do that. And um, he's really a prolific writer. And what he agreed to do was to just do a restaurant or two review. And the Gazette loved him so much that now what you'll see is there's now a feature in the Gazette. It had been bi-weekly and um, it now is gonna be monthly just cause Robin was, um, I mean, it was taking quite a bit of time. And so what he did was really do quite a number of really wonderful articles about restaurants in Northampton and its environs. And um, that was really precipitated by the Building Buzz Group. Um, there were, um, you know, a cleanup of Pulaski Park, um, a graffiti removal project. Um, we also did um, support a Rediscover Downtown, which was a self-guided walking tour with historic Northampton. And um, I'll, what I'll do is to give um, the, the super duper detail of this to Garrett, who can share it with you um, all, because um, I know there are other things that you need to do, but I just want to give you a piece of this for each of the different um, uh, work areas. For new business, um, what we were able to do um, was to try to, again, highlight um, how um, important um, a place Northampton was for business and to try to encourage more to come. And so uh, we're supporting an effort actually that tomorrow night will be kicked off. It's called Sphere Northampton. It's primarily focused on women entrepreneurs and people um, are invited to come to um, the Northampton Brewery and they're gonna be games and connection and networking. And the idea is to try to build a community and um, since so many of the businesses are actually owned by women in Northampton, what we wanted to do was to, I mean, help with that networking. Um, also, um, we, um, you'll see with the, some of the, um, the support, what we encouraged the city to do, and we were delighted that the city um, was successful in this, was getting support for um, um, space businesses which had been vacant for 
a certain period of time where the, um, the um, stores had been in were no longer. And um, people were, businesses were able to apply for money and two places have done this already. We also um, encouraged um, where there were places which were empty, um, what we did was a whole, where it isn't completed yet. Alan um, uh, Wolf from the city is leading this, is um, an inventory of all of the businesses in the city. We realized we didn't even, we didn't have this. So that um, where the spaces were, who actually owned them and, what our goal is, is to actually have an intern to help with this so that we can also look historically. So if any time someone always opens up in one place um, where they haven't been that successful, we want people to be aware of what that history is, or if it has been extremely successful, we want to know that too. But we also know, want to know, I mean, in a sense, who owns what. And um, just as a fast aside, if you didn't have a chance to see what Mass Live did over the weekend with a map of Northampton and just plotting all of the spots that Eric Sewer owned owns currently and those that are open, those that aren't it. It's an eye opener in that sense. And that's what we're hoping to do for the whole city too. Um, so, and also working on materials so that what we'll be able to do um, is to, because we don't actually have material that we can send out to say, we're great. You know, they're wonderful videos, but there hasn't been a way yet of organizing that in what I would say is a really good marketing sense. And it's something that we're doing in terms of the new business group. Um, staffing, um, what we were finding was, I mean, retail and especially restaurants were having a very, very hard time having enough staff. And some of the reason that the restaurants are an open, some of the restaurants that in the past had been open for lunch are not open for lunches because they can't get adequate staffing. Similarly, some are not open as many days of the week as they would like or that there are um, guests who could come to the restaurants, but they don't have adequate staffing. So um, what um, we did was work with Mass Hire, um, the Franklin Han Hampshire, um, mass hire and their pathways for new hires for restaurants and hospitality. Um, there are a number of um, small funding grants, which we're working with. It's primarily HCC for their free line cook training. Um, and also we actually had HCC students come for a work day at the Taste of Northampton and they were supporting that. And similarly, working with Five College for internship program. And I'm leaving the best for last, Garrett. This is Garrett's committee. This is events. <laughs> and so um, what um, we've really wanted to do is to try to have Northampton once again be the premier place for um, events. And um, we have been encouraging the city to try to make sure that um, we can do what we can to open up some of the venues that have been closed um, or haven't been open. And you know, there have been people who have tried to purchase with really good, um, with good, um, uh, good amounts of money, but. Um, uh, for example, with the Iron Horse, um, Eric Sewer wasn't interested in um, following through. So what we were glad about, and I'll say this personally, when the city was able to um, take away one uh, liquor license, I think it really put a fire under Eric Sewer. So, or we hope it has, and we're encouraging of that um, work. We really need the Calvin to be open. We need the um, you know, Iron Horse to be open and Pearl Street 
we need to have venues um, for the great musicians that are in this area. Um, so we did have um, a marketing campaign that was funded by the Travel and Tourism Recovery Grant. And there were 27 festivals that we supported through this effort um, and really were very encouraging of the city, um, opening up Masonic Street, opening up Strong Street, um, and basically bringing life again back to the city. Um, other things, you know, through the DNA, we also um, were very supportive of the, you know, Ice Art Festival, the Back Forge Festival, and we can't be more delighted that finally um, Hampshire Pride will be back at the beginning of May. So that's kind of what we've been doing. Um, and um, I think it's given great morale to many of the boosters of Northampton to feel like um, what they can do. And there are quite a number of people who are involved with all these committees that they feel like they can do something and feel like they're doing something to um, really revitalize the city that they love or that we all love. So I'm happy to entertain questions and encourage um, Councillor Garrick to weigh in too. Well, first, I just wanna say thank you, Leslie, for just giving this kind of big overview of the project. Um, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this here to this committee is that uh, I think just getting the word out about what has been happening behind the scenes. Um, I, I personally have felt that you know, I've been so focused on what we're doing. I haven't really had a chance to do the, the big press hits or runs for stuff. Um, but uh, the, the thing that really struck me was the collaboration between both the city um, and, and private stakeholders. Um, you know, it's been really wonderful watching folks trying to address these big issues. Um, as you stated, uh, you know, we, we need more venues. We were trying to revitalize our city. Um, and so I think a lot of the things we've been doing are trying to address some big issues. You know, we are cataloging all our empty storefronts. You know, we're trying to address, uh, uh, you know, the fact that a very few people own a lot of things. Um, and just for kind of a background, what I've been doing in my entertainment committee is, um, so we, we applied for a couple grants and we got one for uh, what we're calling ConCon Con or Content Creators Convention. Uh, and uh, we are have been working with Brian Foote and the uh, 33 Hawley as well and, and other businesses. And we want to kind of activate our restaurants and retail in different ways. So we've been looking at different podcasters to come uh, both locally grown, but also folks from out of the city to kind of pair up with different places. So the, you know, the thought is to have a food podcast do an event at one of the restaurants where you can have kind of exclusive dinner. Um, Northampton Open Media has been a great partner for this. Uh, part of what we want to do is, is take some of these podcast events and um, create some highlight reels of some fun things that we have had accessible here in the city. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. That is going to be, I believe in 2024, we're gonna try and do the, the content con and, and uh, there's also gonna be an educational aspect to it as well. We wanna work with some of the schools um, as well as Northampton Open Media to, to do some training for folks who, if you, you know, if you want to be in a pod or do a podcast and, and things like that. So we're gonna um, just try to activate the city in a lot of different ways. Um, the other big project that we asked for some funding for was a memorial to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, and I, some people have may have seen it in the press, uh, but the, the reporting kind of missed the mark on what we are, we are doing. Um, and the, the short of it is we are trying to take um, pretty much a natural resource that Northampton has, which is this pop culture icon. Um, I was thinking about things that are unique to Northampton and the Ninja Turtles is, was at the top of my list. And uh, we, we did reach out to the estates of Eatman, Eastman uh, and they really kind of liked the idea. So that gave us the, the go ahead to move forward. Um, we are looking at having four different memorials for the, the Ninja Turtles. Uh, they're gonna be engraved uh, manhole covers, but they're gonna be embedded into the sidewalk. Um, for me, it is really going to be a way to 
move people around the city. Um, I've been working with Jason Weeks, who's been spearheading a lot of this project. So we did a, a couple walks around the city, looking at places which we would want to kind of direct our traffic to go towards. Um, and I also have met with Amy Kaylane from the DNA. She is very excited for it as well. Um, and we've got plans to maybe go for the Guinness Book of Records for biggest pizza party. You know, we want to, <laughs> I know there's a lot of pizza places in Florence, so we're going to try and bring some pizza there. We've got Joe's Pizza, we've got Telus. Um, you know, kind of the, the goals that I have been working on in the entertainment uh, committee have been looking at ways to um, generate excitement about our city again. Um, you know, as we said before, we are in this place where uh, a lot of our venues are closed, but as Leslie said, the city is trying to work around that by activating spaces like Summer on Strong, um, Sonic Street Live, which I had the pleasure of booking on their Saturdays last year, and I'm looking forward to it again. And we have a third space, which is going to be as tenderly called Garage Bands, so that'll be activated as well. Um, and, and a lot of the other work that I've been doing in my entertainment committee is uh, looking at ways to bolster existing events. So we're trying to figure out ways to get people from the three county fairground during the three county fair into downtown, um, looking at ways to, uh, you know, instead of having people come to the area just for an event, we want people to engage in our city. Uh, and I was lucky to put together a crack team of local residents um, from all sorts of entertainment backgrounds. So I've got um, folks from theater backgrounds, I've got, uh, you know, DJs, I've got uh Tim Lumet from Comedy with a Weapon. And so we have just been, I have just been letting the creatives go crazy. Uh, I think it has been really inspiring for myself and some of the people in the creative scene to see that the city um, really is looking towards the future and um, trying to give creatives a chance to um, help shape what we think the city could be uh, and the potential. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I really like uh, about some of the ideas we have is trying to think to the future as we redo our main street. So for instance, the turtles thing is, um, you know, our plan, because we have to use the money before our main street's gonna be redone is we're gonna have a opening with all of the uh, memorials. We've already reached out to, uh, I think we've got three of them covered. Uh, we got Mark Bodie, who is um, a, a pretty famous turtles, artist um, who actually did the mural across from Bang Bang Arts downtown. Uh, he's signed on for that. We've got Eric, oh man, I'm blanking on his name. He's also a tur uh, turtle artist who works in East Hampton. Um, and Jarrett, I'm gonna mess his name up, Krasatsky, um, from, from the Lunch Lady series also has reached out to do one. So we're, we're looking for one more. Um, and, the, and our goal is to, just celebrate some of the things that Northampton has to offer. Um, so that, that's kind of what I've been doing. If you guys have any questions or want to know some more, I think me and Leslie can answer anything. Yeah. Oh, President Nash. I would, yeah, I would also want to acknowledge um, Councillor Nash, who when we were coming up with the 413 um, takeout program. It was really he in the smaller group who really helped birth that. So really thanks for that, which in a sense gave us the encouragement to do all of this. So really thanks. You're giving me too much credit. That was the uh, chamber. Well. <laughs> and you. <laughs> It was I, good. And I think that's the partnership and collaboration that, you know, we've been talking about. It's, you know, it's not such a big place that we can't collaborate easily and it hasn't happened so smoothly. And I think this is a wonderful example of just a great success in that collaboration and really wonderful outcomes too, and still more to come. And I, I just wanted to add to that one thing that I observed, this was not my committee, but just for instance, in the staffing committee, I think a lot of restaurants and, and retail places that were reached out to really were thankful that folks in the city were, were trying to address some of these issues. Um, you know, the pandemic really hit our restaurant and our entertainment industries hard. Uh, and sometimes it could feel like you're left out 
by the wayside as everyone's trying to, to make it through this panic. And um, I know that a lot of what we have done is really to just be there to support you know, these businesses and establishments. So that was very important. Yeah. Councillor Jerry. Thank you. Um, well, this is very exciting. I really appreciate the overview. Um, I was downtown, you know, and it was really hot a couple of weeks ago and just everyone was out. And it just reminded me of uh, how it used to be. Um, and I'm so excited to, to see it that vibrant uh, so much more of the time. Um, I uh, had a question. Basically, you know, the Vibrancy Project ends in December. And how does the chamber and others, how, how do you see us moving forward, especially with picture Main Street construction uh, coming and the disruption that we know that's going to, to have? How, how can we get people to still come and make sure that those businesses can make it through uh, that, that, that time period? Um, and then uh, I just also wanted to just mention, just I appreciate the, <clears throat> the, the kind of, you know, my constituents would write to me about the, the manhole covers issue. And um, I try to explain the economic development potential of city investment, you know, that that it's a multiplier effect. You put a small amount of money in and then you can get uh, much more econo economic development than you put in. Um, so I appreciate when that that thinking is explained um, and especially any any numbers that that folks have attached to those to those projects um, is really helpful so that so that people don't say you could have been spending it on this when they when they really need to understand what what the purpose will be. But yeah, I, I wondered if either of you would would speak to the, um, the future and, and picture Main Street in particular. So I would say what um, the Economic Development Committee itself and also um, those that are the leaders with the Vibrancy Project are really, we're educating ourselves now about the Main Street Design Project. You know, there are hearings that have been happening and this coming month, what we'll be doing is um, really looking at it in more depth. And the, I think the goal is really um, to make sure communication happens in terms of both timing and what some of the issues are. And I think we had kind of a dry run when we first um, uh, were supportive of the outdoor dining and some people wanted you know, barriers in one place versus another. And so what we wanna be certain we're doing is that there's good communication, especially with those businesses in town. And what we're hoping to do with this is have a really running start so that so much is going on that people are gonna get used to, as you said, Councillor Jarrett, um, coming downtown because they're gonna be fun things to do. And um, Councillor Garrett was talking about, you know, uh, you know, a putting, you know, a golf putting game. And someone else was talking about putting, you know, um, lights, um, to what is called, you know, um, you know, the east part of um, the city, you know, after where historic Northampton is. But I think now that we're, um, um, uh, you know, we've been doing this now for a number of months, that is the vision now that we have to begin to think in more specific ways. So we have a few more months before we um, will be, I think, spinning these committees off. And it could be that what we'll still do is have some oversight, but not as intensively. Um, three of us were meeting on a weekly basis to make sure this was all working. And I think what we need to be able to do now is to step back and make sure that what has been set in motion um, is really solid enough to continue and for us to be flexible enough to see at what is going on with that Main Street redesign. I mean, people are obviously very anxious about that and what's the timing, what is it really gonna look like and what effect is it gonna have? And with the change in like the parking costs, you know, everything, um, um, 
we need to begin to try to know what's happening so that we can talk about it in a way that makes sense. Um, so that's what I would say. It's just still a work in progress, but it's not as if with the kind of effort and work that people have put into this and the joy that it's really been. I don't think people are just going to say it's December goodbye. My hope is that there's going to be more um, depth with the committees that I just laid out. But Jim or um, Garrett. I, I was going to say that um, th this is a good question, uh, Councilor Jarrett, because I've been thinking about a lot the, the overall arching um, mission for the Vibrancy Project was, was very large. So a lot of our first meetings were trying to figure out how do you narrow down on a couple of things that could be actionable and, and kind of get some wins under our belt. Uh, but there's some things that we couldn't really do. But, but one thing that really, uh, I think, was a, a through line for a couple committees was just how do we disseminate information and get the word out about things, uh, both in, in the buzz committee, uh, just like kind of trying to, to, to market ourselves outside the area, but also through the entertainment committee, we talked a lot about how do we tell people about what things are happening. And as Leslie said, there was, um, we, there was a website that really supported all the outdoor music festivals um, that, you know, I think the Vince kind of spearhead that one. Um, you know, part, part of what we were hoping to do is have landing places to help guide us through this transition period um, and if we start doing it now before we do the redesign, I think people will get used to um, hopefully checking on some of those things. Uh, I I noticed that they've activated some of the, um, oh my gosh, what are those, the the billboards, the UMass ones, what are those called? Hmm. I'm yeah, Strong Street, the information. Yes. And there's one in, in Plastic Park. I'm really blanking on what those call, but um, you know, some of our thoughts are utilizing some of those things that are in the city to kind of help direct people and let them know, um, you know, if, if parts of the the street will be shut down or or where to go to still enjoy the city. I think are going to be important. So, um. okay, thank you, Councilor Maori. <laughs> So great to see you, Leslie. You're always behind good and interesting things. Oh, thank Whenever you. you're there, I know something interesting is going on. <laughs> um, and actually, I was just thinking, you know, it's I, I, I'm sure, you know, communities are like this in general, but I think Northampton in particular has lots of really contributing stakeholders and people who don't actually live in the community. And that's why when people are like, why do you let, you know, anyone talk at public comment or whatever? It's because so many are, you know, uh, folks ha are invested in this um, city that maybe don't live here. And so um, that was interesting. I didn't know you didn't live here, but I, you've given so much to the city and it's it's really, um, it's really, you know, it's for everyone. The community means something more than, you know, who sleeps here at night. So um, yeah, so that's exciting. And I was just thinking about the, you know, the manhole cover, the, the yeah, it, they kind of lost, the reporting on it really lost it, the, the main idea, which is this is, you know, uh, this is something that Northampton birthed, you know, there's a real connection. Right. I think nationally, you know, people grew up with it and didn't really make the connection that it was coming from Northampton. And that's a real point of pride. And frankly, when you're a desperate mom, you know, a parent with lots of kids looking at dinosaur tracks, you're just as likely or more likely to get in the car to go see. <laughs> let's, not, let's not underestimate the value of that entertainment. And I yeah. totally got Point of that and how it would multiply. Um, I guess my only question is, I'm just curious, you know, I've, this is really helpful because I, I didn't have the overview. I ha I've heard bits and pieces. So how, so are these, um, who are you working with? I know, uh, of course, I know a few of you, you know, I know you two and I know a couple other people, but is it, is it just um, helpful souls in the community? Is it, is it, is it uh, business owners or who's helping, who's, who are on these Oh. Yeah, we could give you the names. Of, I mean, some yeah. of the leaders, like, for example, for the um, the buzz committee with um, Councillor Garrett, um, Bob Fazi, who's someone who lives in yeah. Florence, who used to yeah. run CHD. Um, oh, so people probably know. I just was curious. Like, yeah. And um, for staffing, um, Veronica, um, 
help me with last names. Yeah. Um, you know what? That's what I'll do. I'll give you for each of the um, there are people who were involved either with the Economic Development Committee of yeah. the Chamber, the DNA, right. or the city. Um, so, for example, for new business, um, Alan Wolf is one of the co-leaders. And so that's what we try to do, that it isn't just like one person who leads a committee, but rather having, um, in a sense, buddies do that. And then underneath that, there, um, you know, people were, were able to recruit. And for some people, like cleaning up Pulaski Park, someone might just want to do that and do nothing else but there was someone who was overseeing, helping to oversee that. And that was one, again, that Alan Wolf was doing. So we've had really good relationships with, um, and really great work, I have to say, from you know, the city council with both you know, um, Councillor Nash and <laughs> Councillor Garrett, um, and also the city. Annie Lesko and Alan Wolf have been really remarkable in terms of their commitment to making sure this works. And of course, Vince being the head of the chamber and Amy Kayleen as the DNA. And again, I think this is such a really wonderful example of cooperation and you know, both the nonprofit and the profit-making sector really hand in hand wanting um, Northampton to be the destination that um, it has been and hopefully will continue to be. Well, thank you, Leslie. That, yeah, I feel very fortunate that, that such, you know, such experienced people are giving their time because, yeah, yeah. And I love, I love the way it's all coming together with like the Survival Center and DNA and the Chamber and, and city government. It's great, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, good. So um, I would say I'm so glad you're all interested. I'm happy. I will give the this one page sheet that has really even more details and I'll put the names of the committee chairs and um, I'm happy to let you all know when these committees are meeting. So as you have constituents who are interested or you yourself are interested in just kind of checking it out. Um, I do think that the events and building buzz and new business is really a big focus now that the weather has gotten better too. And we did just have, this was really great um, because of I think some of the visibility, even though some may have complained about the fact that the Ninja Turtle um, do you call them man covers or manhole covers? covers? Yeah. What is it? Manhole covers. Manhole. I, I bet there's a, a new term for that, but yeah, that's what we should have been thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should refer to them as turtle hole covers from, from now on. Okay. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, it really was all over the place, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, I mean, so we did kind of make it in a really important way, and I think that kind of publicity is really great for the city, so. I, I will add that I recently, um, I think it was maybe last week or the week before, uh, had a meeting, myself and Jason Weeks, with uh, a manhole cover company, and they were so excited to come to Northampton and um, they had been in a convention in, in the Midwest and people were talking about Northampton because of this. I know. And I, I don't know what, what we get out of that, but it's pretty <laughs> cool. That, <laughs> but what are. in fact happened with that was um, Vince Jackson was invited um, to go to Boston. This was just uh, last week where there were um, international visitors, which who were kind of the PR and travel agent people from their countries in Europe. And they were primarily first in Boston, but they did come to Northampton. They slept at um, the Hotel Northampton. They actually ate in Amherst at this new protocol and went to an event at the Drake. 
but they had a wonderful, wonderful time. And what they're supposed to do is when they go back to their home countries, they're going to love Northampton and write about it. And if we just had the Ninja Turtle covers, they could have written about that too. <laughs> People love them. And I mean, I've been around long enough that I know which house they lived in on the main street. So, you know, just as we have a tour of many different things in Northampton, I think there are some rabid ninja turtle fans that we could probably put something like that together too. But I think it was a great idea, Garrett. So congrats. I was glad you got support for that. <laughs> Thank you. So that's all I really had to say other than just really thank you to all of you. I mean, I know just a glimmer of how much time and energy it takes to be a counselor, a glimmer of it. And um, I just really thank you for your public service. It makes such a difference and just thanks. Thank you. Councilor Elkins. Oh, I just wanted sorry. to pipe in the, sorry, I mean, we've got some water in the background running, but um, the, uh, I just wanted to thank you for coming. And also I, I hope you won't be discouraged by the attendance uh, on the Zoom today, just to remind you that they're recorded and we really do refer folks um, to these and we'll say, you can watch 15 minutes of this uh, this meeting and, and learn about this project. It's really helpful that you come uh, and to hear all about it. I'm honored to be here. And if anyone needs to be in touch with me, it's really easy. It's just leslie.lori at gmail. So I'm happy to take emails. Okay. Thank you so much for coming, Leslie. And thank you for all, all right. the work you've really been doing. Really, thanks. Good night. Good night. Um, and and before we finish, I just do want to say, anyone who's watching, um, you know, please feel free to reach out to myself as well. We do need more help getting the word out. And uh, if you feel like you are, you know, have some ideas, we love hearing ideas. That's again been my favorite part about this project is just, um, you know, thinking about the city in a different light and. Uh, I tell everyone that our greatest resources are people, and we've got some really awesome people here. So please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, thank you, Leslie. Bye bye. All right. Thanks, guys, for for enjoying that. Hopefully, um, with that being done, the next item is items referred to the committee, and there are none. So, does anyone have any new business? No. Oh. Oh, yay. Well, with that. Which is, I'd move to adjourn. Yeah, second. <laughs> but Laura, roll call, please. Oh, I can't hear you, Laura. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Elkins. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. And Councillor Mayori. Yes.